Yep, it really is. It's time to have a rest. Days of refreshing were foretold to come. Uh, Acts 3.21, in the latter days of the great restoration. So it's time that we can take the load off and just relax. It's time, believe it or not, that we can rest and give our burdens unto he who is the destination of all of our walks on the wild side of passionate love for all that would bring forth serenity, bliss, and uh, that kind of peacefulness that is found only in our Prince of Peace alone. So it's time to move and groove. Let's rock and roll to a more passionate kind of moving faith because people, if you have stopped giving away your love, you're dying. You're part of the walking dead and you become part of the problem in this your loveless world. So we need, need to stir up our love. Go do like me. Get yourself a, a love hat. Let down your mane. Be part of the pride of the roaring lion of Zion and praise God. That's the name of a uh, family of lions is uh, pride. So it's time. And people, as we rest and take the time to exalt, to magnify, to fellowship, I promise everyone coming henceforth onto this channel will be given a renewed zeal uh, uh, to renew their joy again and praise God and whether that comes from rock and roll or from the movement of the spirit moving forward uh, with the volatility of uh, old faithful geyser of Christ living water ascending back unto him from whence he sends it to renew us so we can rest in him and his perfect will and his love and then we can go take a vacation as for me in my house I just want to serve the Lord and I want to praise him and welcome to this channel that magnifies the goodness of our God I am who I claim to be and I'm the most ignored person on uh, this here internet and by far the most passionate and that's just people's fear. Once people quit fearing exaltation of their very own living Lord, and they realize that if they entertain such, it will lift them up much higher. And if they learn the teaching that the Lord has given me to restore all things, they shall be prospered and shall mount up on the wings as eagles, even the regal eagle of the eon who is the fluttering wings of uh, the passion of Christ, the, the dove of love in action. Love always has to be in action, otherwise it is dying and people join the ranks of the walking dead. But one thing's for sure, as, as the Lord was moving towards the meltdown of his career ahead, from vipers of humanity, the religious, who only had a form of godliness, but denied all the power of love. So it came about people. I can make sure you see many sitting there because you know what? Many is a lot of inspiration. Walt Disney, he purposely did not um, copyright his song, A Small World After All, because he wanted the world to always ring with joy and with celebration. And what uh, a small world after all says is that it's been far too long a world of festering fears and festering tears. It doesn't have to be a small world destroyed by our gross darkness, our lack of understanding. The veil of understanding is now pulled away, Daniel 12 time, so that the wise may shine as the glorious sun of love who arises with healing under his wings of magnificency.
for he arises as our majesty and majesties in the splendor of his majesty, and he shines as the star of Bethlehem, whose brilliance he exceeds easily, hands down, for he is the living law in love that can never stop, shall always win, shall always transcend, shall always be, be, be victorious, for he is all of our victory in all that is victorious ahead of us. And ahead of us, praise the Lord, it is as uh, Eden. So hello unto my Australian friends, and thank you for popping in. So it came to pass, Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. And uh, he was an uh, interesting guy, tax collector. And he, he lived at Jericho. And there was such a, um, after blind Bartimaeus was healed and he started singing the Lord's praises, exalting he who is Jehovah Rapha, the healer of all of us, the banner thereof, the presence of our healer of the ages, our great physician, Christ stood in the splendor of our healer of healers. And the exact image, the likeness, mirror image of uh, God. And that living word Zacchaeus was looking unto that day. And he would grow awfully tall real fast by standing on the shoulders of that giant. For Christ saw never under the veil. He saw far beyond it. He never saw through a glass darkly. For he is the center of the glass and allowed it to be, to divide and to separate until the time of the end when he would arise as the Son of Love to destroy all the gross darkness that has covered all men. The understanding that his love has always been completely forgiving. You cannot have forgiveness without love or love without forgiveness. They are one and the same thing. One cannot exist without uh, the other. So it came to pass in those days of the celebration of our risen good shepherd over all the flocks of man, Emmanuel, or God with us again, returning soon. If I am who I claim to be, and I am, he's right behind me, people. All the Lord wants for this world is an attitude adjustment, and he shall relent, and just as Nineveh was not destroyed, nor too shall the worst of the worst come forth. His mercy goes before him. And he said that unless the prior age was cut short by his word of flame, his Holy Spirit uh, opening again, his word was only closed until the time of the end. Uh, Daniel 12, 9 proclaimed it. And so his word is coming forth. And it came to pass that Zacchaeus of Jericho, after hearing all the commotion about blind Bartimaeus being healed, it came about that the Son of Man, through a lot of word of mouth, also reached uh, that tax collector's ear. And he was right in for some uh, attention because his mind had been racing very much lately. So it was a remarkable time. And Christ Jesus actually put the remarkability within all incredibility that was overflowing and also from the overflowing praises of people like Bartimaeus who was praising God for working miracles through his miracle worker of the ages and sending forth his most radiant word of instantaneous transformational healing of love because it's all born of love compassion mercy empathy and sympathy for all who are hurting which have been all of us at times. So it came about the day after his healing. Bartimaeus, that former blind man, he stood close to Zacchaeus at Jericho's outer gates, the oxen gate, and he was caught up within a deep spirit of worship, 
borne upon the fluttering wings of the spirit of love and a song of adoration for our beloved on high danced for the most high in his heart in his heart of hearts and Bartimaeus more than ever wanted to know our risen good shepherd's heart that had touched him through his mirror image on high that God had allowed his sunshine to smile most radiantly upon his eyes to dissolve all that blocked his earthly eyesight. And nor did it matter that Bartimaeus had been blind, for he freely, when he freely received the Lord's overflowing grace and better understanding of his love, that grateful one of some brand new eyes, physical and spiritual both, he was continually telling everyone that would listen, friends and strangers alike, it didn't matter, that he would evermore be uh, be seen by God's brightest light, who was Christ Jesus, who flapped his pearly whites to dissolve all that was blinding that man, his love overthrowing all that was not born thereof. And he had great mercy by healing him within a moment of a moment, and Bartimaeus could not stop praising the Lord. And he was so mightily impacted and moved. His passion was a ballistic. It was far beyond laser beam level and fireworks. It was moving with the kind of action that was always in the word of our Lord of Lords. For when he spoke, his, his words were like thunder and lightning that shook the earth. And furthermore, Bartimaeus also stood faithfully as a continual witness unto the abundant love of his heavenly Father while singing the highest psalms thereof. Therefore Zacchaeus quickly got used to that very grateful soul that had told many that our man from Galilee was the chosen one. And he was referring partially to uh, John the Baptist, who was renowned big time in Jericho. Jesus was getting famous, but John the Baptist is, inf is totally infamous in, in good ways and bad ways. And so it came to pass that um, many amongst those of uh, Jericho, they knew that Isa Yeshua, Jesus, Emmanuel, God in the flesh with us again soon, he would be freely always, as the Lord of always, continually bringing people his Father's overflowing glory from the floodgates of God's very best wishes on high to bring forth and pour out some brand new leases on life, only having the very best plans imaginable that we could even comprehend. So then it came to pass that Bartimaeus told souls thereabouts that they should be uniting together in the name of our Lord, whose name is love, and all knees shall bow at love, and all tongues shall confess love. For those who love are born of God and know him because he is love. And so praise the Lord. Those were, were the days when they could let their fa faces shine by his love that he was releasing to anyone that had arms to receive the living waters of his attention, born with charity for all. And thusly, uh, when Bartimaeus talked, people listened closely, and he was adding that hearts should always meditate upon Christ's love by, by night and by day while rejoicing evermore within that Lord of always, within his joy. And all, as, as um, these things were happening and moving the spirit, Zacchaeus, he wanted to be prepared for what was about to happen. Because after Bartimaeus had said a few words, and he'd be stepping back up towards the end of the night, but uh, Zacchaeus, he uh, figured, I'm going to get the best spot in the whole. He climbed up a tree because he was so short. Otherwise, he couldn't even get to see Jesus. So um, 
af it came to pass after his healing that the former blind man Bartimaeus was ranting and raving so much about our carpenter of the ages and how his his eyes were but as nails to the hammer of his word that cleared uh, away those spiritual and physical cataracts and broke them into a million pieces by the pounding of that glory. And he was believed before just to have been a, a, a looney tune by Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus had seen old, poor, blind Bartimaeus and his uh, neon-colored uh, uh, blind man's robe many times, begging. And he always had looked down upon the man. But here the guy was praising the Lord, and there was something about that that it didn't set right. He, he was someone that probably should have been praising God because he had everything he wanted. He was, he, he was, he was uh, next in line. He was uh, negating all that was truth. And uh, he had everything he wanted. And he was a wealthy man. And how could some poor guy that didn't even, um, that didn't even uh, have nothing, how could he be praising God? So there was a contradictory something about it. just didn't set right. So he was inquisitive. So he climbed up the tree. And then it came about that that wealthy man imagined that he was just singing some kind of weird jibber-jabber, uh, along with some nonsensical mumbo-jumbo. He was trying to fight against the spirit of love, trying to go in opposite, uh, tr finding fault with love. And that's what many will do to this station. My God, there's something wrong with someone praising the God like that. <laughs> really? Accordingly, it came to pass that uh, Zacchaeus would have loved to have been able to get far away from that newly sighted follower of God's son. Uh, hearing the praises of that blind Bartimaeus, who wasn't blind anymore, was getting under his skin, and but he was helplessly stuck at the same gate, having been a tax collector there, uh, and it was his job to enforce customs upon that very lucrative trade of balsam. Uh, that's the, the what kept uh, Jericho rocking and rolling was their balsam supplies, which was that city was always noted for. It. And nor was there any question at all about Zacchaeus being greatly despised by all the people of uh, Jericho. That was common knowledge because he was working uh, for the Romans on a commission basis. The more tax he got out of their pockets, the more money the Romans would put into his pocket. Uh, and uh, so he was earning wealth in uh, some backhanded bribery kind of ways uh, at the hard work, over the hard work of others. So Zacchaeus was not uh, uh, appreciated much around that, that great metropolitan city for those who knew him. So he was curious enough, though, to let his curiosity override his repulsion of the praise that he was hearing. And some people are very repulsed by hearing God's name praised and magnified. I know that sounds insane uh, in a world that claims it's religious, but true it is, I tell you. And so it came about that it was going to be time for the music of the evening to ascend. It was as though the, the, the orchestra of heaven and all its hosts were, were moving and grooving to the only tune that they wanted to sing. And his name is, was, and always shall be our love of the ages. So people, uh, that's it for this. And let me just tell you, if you come to the next episode, you're going to be hearing some secrets that have only now been revealed. If you snooze, you're going to lose. Don't do it. That's not even nice, not for your brain. You don't want to be destroyed for lack of knowledge, Hosea 4, 6, do you? Don't do it. No. <laughs> Love it.